Yes, so I shall have already started a lecture series, and today is the 64th uh, lecture. And you will be delighted to know that uh, 63 lectures have been very, very informative and has been given by stalwarts in different fields. Not only science, administration, finance, arts, and uh, commissions, and there are so many distinguished people they have, they have given a uh, uh, lecture, lecture in, at this forum. Uh, so today we are holding a 64th uh, lecture, and today we have got a very distinguished veterinarian, administrator, and uh, researcher, scientist, and whatnot in the form of Dr. K. M. Bajal Barwa, sir. Uh, first, I would like to, to welcome all of you, uh, especially Dr. Madan, Padamsri, Dr. Emil Madan, and so many vice chancellor, distinguished vice chancellor. Uh, Dr. Ramesh Sir Singh, I would, to whom I can say, I can see here Dr. C.S. Prasad and directors of all the all institutes, uh, SR Institute, uh, scientists, students, and researchers. And very much, very warm welcome to all of you uh, at this uh, lecture forum on this platform. Uh, let me first very briefly uh, let you know the brief biodata of uh, Dr. K.M. K.M. sir. Uh, he did his PhD in animal reproduction and is an ARS scientist in uh, livestock production management. He's a distinguished veterinary scientist and research manager. He served in various capacities from scientist to director of two ICR institutes and OSD of another. another. And uh, he has been deputy director general of ICR, uh, ICR and vice chancellor of Assam Medical University for 10 years, as well as the country coordinator of FAO for animal genetic resource conservation and utilization. And besides that, she has, been also, she has also worked as a sectoral director for World Bank funded projects. During his service period, Dr. Bajan Barua developed six models of intensive <coughs> integrated farming systems, a pig variety, pig housing system for all for hill areas, adopted and popularized artificial insemination in pig and mittens, introduced rabbit in north northeastern region for meat, for skin, and wool, besides facilitating the release of many crop and animal varieties and transfer the agriculture technology to farming community under technology showcasing program. He has also attended multiple research in both plant and animals, which led to establishment of excellent Department of Biotechnology University Center. Dr. Bajwarua has also distinguished himself as a crusader of organic farming in northeastern region, where he arranged first ever international conference on organic farming in 2004. He also framed animal science research agenda for the country, but 11th five-year plan and established two ICR institutes, three new colleges, rebuilt four old colleges, a number of KVKs, and agri equation sector, etc. Dr. Bajirua is a scientist and a researcher. He has authored more than 170 research papers, 22 technical bulletins, four books, and a number of books, chapters, besides writing scientific reports and vision documents. Dr. Benvarua has guided six PhD and three MVSC students. He has participated in a number of international seminars, meetings, discussions in several countries. He is also a fellow of National Agricultural Science Academy and National Academy for Veterinary Sciences. For his meritorious work, Dr. Bajurwa received many awards and recognitions, including Doctor of Science of the Skaza, Fakhruddin Ali Ahmed Award, and Sardar Patel Outstanding Institution Award. He also worked as the President of Indian Agriculture Universities Association, New Delhi, and presently he is Vice President of National Academy of Agricultural Sciences. So with this distinguished career, I would like to invite Dr. Kim Bajwarua to give a, give a lecture, which will be around 40 45 minutes, on the topic entitled Assessing Animal Science Technology Contributions to Livestock and Poultry Sector Growth, Need of the Hour. Now, let, let us now begin. 
so much coordination ability. He has made a wonder, wonderful orator. I hope that today, next 45 minutes will be going with so grass that will be really, you know, be benefited by his experiences in the universe science as a whole. So far, I invite you, sir. Now floor is yours. Uh, any, any after that, after any question, everybody asks things that can they can they can ask question in chat so that I can in the in the last after after he finishes the lecture, uh, we, we can have a few questions also important question, of which I think we will be glad to answer. It is thank you very much, and I invite you, sir. Your floor is yours, sir. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Chupati ji. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I think our uh, Honorable DG is yet to join. I think any moment he will be joining. Uh, is it? Uh, am I audible, first of all? Yeah, 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 you are audible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all the distinguished uh, personalities and the participants present, we, we have uh, the Padma Sri. Award winner, Dr. Madan, then Dr. Ramesh Singh, so many, maybe other <coughs> vice chancellors, honorable VCs, the director of national institutes and other institutes of ICA from the uh, veterinary and agricultural universities, the colleagues, uh, uh, Dr. Prasad, who is here, one outstanding colleague that I had <coughs> in ICA system. Uh, the students, I am told that some students also have participated, uh, and uh, all of you. Well, a very, very good afternoon. A very good afternoon, and I am indeed, indeed, very, very much delighted to be interacting with you uh, this afternoon. Uh, I must first of all thank Dr. Tripathi ji, the Honorable Deputy DG IC here for inviting me and also the Deputy DG Education for you know, accommodating me for this particular you know, lecture today. Uh, Dr. Tripathiji, thank you in, in person. Uh, actually, you know, after receiving the information, the proposal rather, from Dr. Tripathi, I was thinking what to speak on. I was thinking because, you know, I myself had given and also listened to a number of scientific and technical discussions over the last four decades, quite a long period different. So therefore, I didn't want to repeat any one of those. No, I thought, let me speak on something which has not, I think, been dealt with uh, in detail so far. It is an introspection, basically, an introspection of animal science uh, contribution, <clears throat> we have to, my intention was to see how best we can strengthen ourselves with whatever information we do not have on our contribution to the growth of livestock and poultry sector. So here I am <clears throat> in front of you <clears throat> today with a topic that goes like, you know, can I uh, share my slides? Just one minute it will take, I think. <coughs> oh, good lady. Okay. Uh, well, <coughs> with a topic which has already been told. Assessing animal science technology contribution, it is not technology, it is the technology contribution to livestock and poultry sector growth. You know, how do we assess, what assessment do we have, all those kinds of things. You know, I have uh, selected this particular topic with a view to, as I said, strengthening ourselves, the animal scientists, with quantifiable data and information on our technological contribution Towards the, uh, towards the livestock sector, rather towards transforming the livestock and poultry sector in India, <clears throat> and which has moved, this transformation has moved the sector from a state of deficiency in terms of animal products to a level of, if I say, satisfactory sufficiency. 
<clears throat> now the the thing is let us let us see how have we moved on <clears throat> actually this slide is basically for the youngsters and also the students who are here the astrologers like dr madan sir and others might know this but i thought for the benefit of our you know other person youngsters in particular i must share this slides that we know uh, our you know we we take pride we definitely have the region to take pride in india being the first in milk production <clears throat> 210 million tons of milk we produce today which is around 11 times increase do you know in 1950 51 we were producing hardly around 17 million ton of milk from that 17 million ton we have jumped up to 210 million ton it's a quite a jump and this has also increased the milk availability per person earlier we had 130 g and today we, we, the availability stands at 427 g and you know, around 350 percent increase that kind of a transformation which has happened in egg production again if we see today we are producing i say around 100 but the figure says that it is 110 billion eggs and this is around 52 53 times more than the eggs that we are producing in our journey you know in the last, last 70 years from around 1.8 billion eggs then 50 51 we are producing say 110 billion it's quite quite a good number the availability of egg has gone up from mere 5 at that time to uh, <clears throat> to around 91 eggs today You know, that kind of a transformation it 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 has <coughs> it has seen, <coughs> and we are also you know fifth in rural production in the world. Although the variation between first and fifth is quite high, but with our 4.2 million tons of rural production, we stand fifth uh, in fifth in the world. So the, the, that way, rural you know availability rate has also gone up, gone up substantially, and in terms of milk. Meat, total meat. If we say we are producing today 6.3 million ton, which is around roughly around 1.9 million ton in 2020-21. In over 20 years, this has been the growth, and so on in different sectors. So in this particular, uh, this thing, so obviously, you know, such growth in livestock and poultry sector could not have been possible without technology injection. A lot of technologies our scientists have developed. They have gone into. So therefore, animal scientists overall they deserve the, their quota of appreciation definitely. And I personally acknowledge the kind of technologies that they have <coughs> generated so far, and the technologies that have, that have found their way to the user groups. <coughs> But th this is all good. But what is happening? what is happening today is questions are there everywhere people are asking questions like you know what is the contribution of this technology in terms of their adoption and economic value or in other words they are asking what is the percent share of this technology in this growth the percent share of this technology in this in this growth as i say you know this this much of growth unfortunately and paradoxically many a times we cannot quantify it we we cannot quantify it we say we have this 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 much but so far as quantification comes you know we, we many a times we falter we cannot say in terms of percentage in milk production the technology contribution is 60% 50% 70% or 30% that authentically we are not in a position to say <clears throat> so in this digital era definitely we need this digitized information you know, to substantiate our share of claim you know we keep on yes our share there has been our share without our share you know this transformation could not have been possible but the thing is we need data we need information we need their analysis Uh, you know, not only to claim our share, but also to you know, these days adopt all forms of artificial intelligence tools and techniques, or all this. And then, if we have this data, then we can you know ask for our commensurating resource share 
the budget allocation, you know, all those kinds of things. And, and, and basically because this kind of question comes up when, you know, this comes up question comes up when we claim for our NPA. Okay. When, when we say that there should be veterinary universities and all that, when we say there should be institutions like ICVR, this kind of questions come up. But the thing is, these are not bad questions. The issue is how we prepare ourselves to answer these questions you know, in a in very acceptable manner. That, that is what is the whole issue. You know, therefore, you know, what to do? to convincingly answer this, you know. Rather, how do we prepare ourselves to convincingly answer this? So I'll, I'll have, you know, two or three examples and then two or three suggestions. I, I assure you, I'll complete within the allocated time of around 40, 45 minutes. Now, example one, if we take it from poultry. I have taken just one example from, you know, director of the poultry research, Hyderabad. So they have, you know, they have developed four backyard poultry breeds. Um, I will be talking specifically about backyard poultry. You know, with commercial poultry, I am not touching at this point of time. So now the thing is Hyderabad, P, P, uh, DPR Hyderabad has produced four backyard breeds and also five breeds through its EICRP centers, including one breed here in Assam, EICRP on poultry, <coughs> the, the breed Kamrupa. You know, that way, five plus four, Nine, you know, different bridges one institute has developed so far. And I am told that the, the DPR also supplies 45 lakh germplasm of these bridges annually, which adds up to around 4.5 crore in the uh, last 10 years. The, however, what is happening in the performance line, performance record down the line, we have given 45 you know, lakh germplasm. There has been multiplication of this jamplajam down the line. We do not have that information on their egg production, on their meat production, and all that. If they were available with us, all this kind of information, we could have clearly claimed our share to national backyard poultry, bus poultry meat and egg basket, that this is what is the share. That too from one institute. Now you can definitely you can imagine there are other players, the other institutes like Kari and others, the state veterinary universities, the veterinary colleges in SAUs. You know, if you take these contributions, it will be quite quite high. <coughs> now another way also, if you see, from calculating the contribution of the peer alone. You know, we can, as I said, definitely say 4.5 million numbers per year. They produce, say, for example, around 225 lakh eggs. If we consider 50% female laying eggs, you know, at the rate of 100 eggs, they produce around 225 lakhs eggs and around, you know, 675 to 700 uh, ton of poultry meat. Now, now, now the thing is, as I said, if we imagine the contribution of all others, then it is a huge contribution. We can quantify one technology. The breed has contributed to this level, to this percentage. And anyway, however, we are not here to imagine. As I said, we can imagine our contribution. But you know, there is no time for imagination now because actually we have to actually compile and place the country data on the contribution of technology generators towards this rural poultry. So that's how we will have to definitely do that. The so second example, if we take uh, in case of vaccines for livestock. Now the thing is, I, I, I got in touch with IPRI. They have given me some information. Now so you, we see that you know, IPRI has produced nine vaccines uh, recently. You know. They have a list of vaccines, but I'm, I'm talking about the recent vaccines. There are around nine vaccines, and uh, they have commercialized each of these to 28 companies. They have earned also revenue and all that, you know, through commercialization. In addition to this, they have the institute also has produced 5.7 million doses of FMD, uh, you know, 5.5 million doses of DPR, and 0.22 million doses of CFR, etc., etc. Now, 
uh, another information is 0.8 number of companies to which the PPR vaccine was outsourced by LVRI. They have a target of producing 420 million doses of PPR vaccine. And similarly, the good pox vaccine around 80 million. Now, from this, if we see, yeah, we find that the vaccine doses for FMD, CSF, and good pox, they are not adequate in numbers. You know, PPR vaccines, a vaccine appears to be to meet the requirement, you know, provided you know, the companies can meet the target. But even at this rate, let us see, say 5.7 million doses. What has, can be the contribution? 5.7 million doses of FMD vaccine. That means 5.7 million cattle head were protected against FMD. You know, <clears throat> that, that, and the result, the result was there was no mortality, there was no morbidity, there was no reduction in milk yield. You know, now the thing is, if, if we collect this way, the information, you can see what sort could be the contribution that the vaccine technology is making. <clears throat> but again, the thing is, we, we have no time to assume, as I said, you know, the contribution could be quite high. If we take all the vaccines, if we take the number of animals saved, if we, if we take uh, the control measures that the, these vaccinations could uh, take for um, not reducing the you know production from uh, the, the production of milk, milk etc. You know there are quite a huge number of uh, contribution. But the thing is, we 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 can no longer afford to achieve. We have to have precise data, as I said before. Now, the doable, few doables. Now the thing is, sector wise. What I feel, sector wise, we need to collate, collate and compile the information for a near accurate assessment of our contribution. You know, we will we, we'll have to do that. We, we are already late, but we will definitely have to do that. In this sector also, I will give example of only two sectors, the two sectors I have just now touched. I'll give the example of these two sectors and then see uh, how best we prepare ourselves. Now in milk sector, uh, if we see, the production aspect. See, um, we have, we know, ICR institutes, including veterinary universities, colleges under state agricultural universities, we have developed different breeds, varieties, and selection lines of <coughs> mills animal. <coughs> now, what is their actual number countrywide? What is the number of such varieties? Country-wise, what is the number of selection lines, say in case of buffaloes and others? What is their number country-wide? You know, <clears throat> what is their even number in the institute of their origin? Okay, wherever, you know, wherever the institutes you know, bred those varieties, what is the number? Well, you know, all those kinds of things, this data, data we definitely need. How many of them, this breed varieties and all that, or this even doses? Reach the growers. How many of them? You know, if, if we can quantify that, well, they have gone into through different routes for milk production enhancement. You know, we, we will definitely, countrywide, we will have to compile this data you know, to be stronger. You know, we need to be stronger. And definitely, I think we will have to do that. In case of variety release, one of my you know, observations. One of my observes are nothing, uh, I think it should not be taken negative line. But what is happening? How do we release a variety? Who is responsible for you know, breeder seed production? A variety we have developed, you know, who will produce that variety? Or they are cement. You know, like in you know, a crop sector, if you see, certain things we have to learn from, from sectors like crop sector as well. They have a well-planned system of developing and recommending a variety. <clears throat> you know, there is Central Varietal Release Committee, State Varietal Release Committee. In our case, what is happening? We feel that we have developed a variety and we just say a variety has been released. So we have, <clears throat> I would request the deputy, we have to 
so that we systematize the release of the variety. If I would also request the Honorable Vice Chancellor's present. At state level, they can have state variety, uh, say, animal variety release committee. At central level, maybe under DAHDF, we can have a central animal variety release committee. And then the moment we have a central animal variety release committee, the responsibilities will be given to the cattle or buffalo institutes to produce the semen of that variety, to, <coughs> to, to, to multiply that variety. So then only it can go, it can have in roots. You know, and then we can we can claim for good numbers. And these days, as, as you know, a major focus, major emphasis is on our indigenous cattle. <clears throat> indigenous cattle, so therefore, now the thing is we need that by and large, we have a heterogeneous population today. Indigenous population, good that, you know, institute like NIAB, <clears throat> National Institute of Animal Biotechnology, Hyderabad, they have developed the genomic chips which will identify the indigenous animal from rest of the breeds. So we, we can also take the help of those things and then have focused research and developmental agenda on our indigenous breed, <clears throat> which is also the desire of the government <clears throat> today. Now the thing is, coming back to what I was saying on, 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 on this, the, how many private players took up our cement production technology you know, we know there are many private players who have taken this technology from us. You know, what are the kind of doses they might have prepared, at least for last 10 years, or if not 10 years, maybe for five years. In last five years, how many doses they, they prepared, breed-wise, variety-wise, and the kind of development they have brought in, in terms of production and others. So all, all, all those things, those data, I think we'll, we'll definitely have to collect and how many state department officials, each institute across the country, we are training the state department officials in the entire process of semiology and all that. But I think they also must have gone back after the training and all that. They have, they started producing semen and all that. The kind of, you know, average number of doses per person, if we can calculate, then it will be a huge thing. <clears throat> no, uh, the uh, thing is similar. The, the modern technologies. Some NGOs have taken IVF technology, MOET technology, the cloning and uh, technology, of course, is yet to be taken. But the embryo transfer technology, you know, which is our technology developed by us, you know, this has been taken by private players. I, I personally know um, an NGO on the Reliance Company. They have, you know, done. They are doing tremendous job on, on embryo transfer at field level. But, but the thing is, we are not claiming the share of our technology in that. You know, they, they have done the, this based on the technology that was developed maybe in India. Uh, Dr. Madan Sar himself was associated in IBF and MOET, etc. <laughs> you know, that's it. It their share, that share. You know, say, say if, we, if we bring in a reference of uh, PPV and FR, you know, plant variety and uh, uh, production right. There, what is happening, that credit sharing, benefit sharing, there is a clause. Even if somebody has taken a variety from you, they will have to give you the benefit. From you means the person from whom the variety was taken or the variety originated. Similarly, you know, the technology which were originated in our institution, in our universities, we must get a share, whoever takes it. So therefore, you know, we, we will definitely have, we will definitely have those kinds of, you know, uh, those kinds of information so that we can make an economic evaluation of uh, all, all those kinds of things. So similarly, our, our the thing is NDRI, institutes like NDRI has developed a number of, you know, a number of anti um, kits, you know, the, the antibiotic residue detection kits, the adulterant detection kits in milk, the pesticide residue kit, detection kits in milk. How many of those kits, who is who are producing, how many have been produced, where it has gone? So that is our, our share, our share of the technology, in the, both in terms of benefiting the users and in terms of earning revenue.
you know, no, no, that kind of a thing. We will definitely have to do that. And similarly, many a times you do not talk about further the kind of further varieties which have been developed by institutions. Now we have ICR institutions like IGFRI. We have the, the veterinary colleges who are producing this, you know, different further varieties across the country. We have also ICRP on uh, forest crops. This different, you know, for, what is the area coverage of the uh, um, by these varieties developed by us? You know, the way we say in crop sector, you know, area coverage of this particular variety is this much. So we should be in a position to say area coverage of this further variety developed by this is this much. And the contribution of this, of the further produced in under that area is in terms of milk can be quantified. You know, that, that kind of a thing I think we will have to do. And recently, say, for example, we are blamed, the livestock sector is blamed for emission of methane. You know, they, they, well, I am very glad I congratulate the NIANP. Recently, they have developed this, um, uh, developed uh, uh, Harid Dhara, you know, which controls, which reduces methane emission to the extent of 23%. Now we can even, now we can calculate if this Harid Dhara is adopted and used at least by 50% of the animals in the country, you know, then 150 million, uh, say cattle and buffalo put together, 50% will be 150 million. If in 150 million we can reduce the methane emission, you can imagine its impact on the environment, you know, and, and the kind of, you know, petting that we will get. You know, that kind of quantification yeah. you know, I, I am talking about. <clears throat> Now, similarly, in, in health aspect, <coughs> that was in production aspect, some of the uh, informations that we need, and in health aspect also, as you say, as we all know, <coughs> quite a sizable number of vaccines and diagnostics we have prepared. Well, now, we, we, we take pride, and we have legitimately take pride in eradicating rinderpest, we are going to take pride in eradicating diseases like FMD and PPR. These are all, all the, 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 the kind of diagnostics that we have prepared. It all helped in, in diagnosis diseases, diseases, the dreaded diseases like African swine fever, like the PRRS, the avian influenza, all that kind of diagnostic. Now, vaccine doses. <coughs> ICR and SCUs prepared thus far. That a, a compiled information we really. need. How many vaccine doses for different diseases? You know, we prepared our, you know, universities prepared so far. That we need, as I said before. And how many are being prepared by the companies to which we had out, outsourced the seed virus? <coughs> At least for last 10 years, if we can have this data, you know, then we can legitimately claim the share of our technology is this much in terms of, you know, saving the animals, in terms of, you know, ensuring the continued productivity of the animal and all that. Now, yet another example in the health sector, what we, what we also know is the number of, we have not taken the actual credit for that, a number of diagnoses we have already given for different diseases of national importance. And based on those diagnoses, national action plan has been framed. You know, and that action plan had resulted control. One of these diseases, say for example, avian influenza. We had given the diagnosis. The diagnostic, uh, this thing, was uh, uh, diagnosis Responsibility was taken up by ICR Institute at Bhopal. You know, they had given. Following that, the nation had taken the national action plan, and then the control could be could be ensured in the endemic areas. How many parts that were saved because of the diagnosis given, because of the action plan that was initiated? You know, that would substantiate our claim, even in. An area in a state like say Tripura or in Meghalaya or in Assam, for example, the number of bonds that could be saved because of this intervention is a very, very huge kind of contribution. The assessment only is needed. Now, 
<coughs> and that's why. And then if we can do this, we can also assess the economic value of a technology. You know, and I, I feel we must do that. We, we put together, we all will have to do that. Now the thing is, yeah, another example on poultry sector, Some I, um, something I have said, but little more let me tell you. As you know, all of you know, 28 livestock sector, 20, 28 livestock census, do you know? 45.8% increase in rural poultry. 40, that is whooping increase, 45.8%. Overall, there was an increase of 27%. But the increase in that 27, 45.8% was from this thing, rural poultry. <coughs> and it is around now 37%. If we leave the commercial poultry to the commercial houses and concentrate ourselves only on rural poultry, we are responsible for 37% of the total poultry population. So how best we do that? What are the programs, etc. we take? And what is the share we claim? As I said, 45 lakh came from PDP. Maybe some 40 lakh came from Kari. Another 40 lakh, that way, course, might have come from different institutions. That, that, uh, that are operating in poultry sector. And in that case, maybe in this 317 million total rural poultry bird, our contribution could be around 100 plus million. You know, but the thing is, because we do not have that data, we are not in a position to convincingly say that. See, in this 317, our, our contribution is 150 million or 100 million. And which is the region for this growth of 45.8 percent. So that kind of a thing. So <clears throat> and, 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 and therefore, the, this, this as, I, as I said, the nationwide database on this will definitely establish our contribution, not only in terms of you know increasing the population, but also in terms of facilitating doubling of the farmer's income because poultry is 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 a sector and through which you know, farmers income are being doubled it is seen particularly during covid period you know, even otherwise also so similarly quantifying the contribution of technology towards the disease diagnostics the therapeutics the vaccines shall add value to our overall you know, assessment of the contribution of our technology. Now, how to get going? <clears throat> These are some of the examples. Now, some responsibilities to ICR and spe some specific responsibility to the respected the Buddhi Dizi animal science. <laughs> because it is during your time this has to happen. And, um, well, it is just to happen for our good, you know, for this thing. So what I, how we can go is the animal science division of ICR. You may, I think definitely they will have to take a lead to contact each institute under it, under the division. They will also have to contact each state veterinary universities, the veterinary colleges under state agricultural universities to collect the available information at least for last 10 years on breed, on varieties, on semen, on vaccines, on diagnosis that they produced um, and also that they outsourced, you know, <clears throat> with, with, if collect them and also they will all have to keep a trend of the livestock and poultry sector growth in their state during that period. What has been the growth pattern like? You know, <clears throat> that they, they will have to do. And secondly, after uh, an initiation is made by the deputy DG himself writing, you know, such, you know, SOS sort of letter to these institutions, then you know, DG himself may perhaps like <clears throat> by this, you know, institution, an <clears throat> institution, you know, so, and, 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 the, and the thing is, so, so that they can assess the delivered and deliverable technology database. You know, the institutions have already delivered, some of them will be delivered, 
you know, on all that database, this, you know, on all that database, this IT cell will first, you know, pre, uh, uh, I think handle. Now, after this, we'll have to go for a meta-analysis of this data, you know, so collected. We'll have to go for a meta-analysis uh, to arrive at a clear picture on data back technology contribution. You know, then, um, then only, you know, we'll know what is actually the, the, the contribution of uh, the animal scientist was the sector's growth. Mm -hmm. And then this data, when we go for this kind of analysis and all, that, all this, that will also help us embracing you know, technologies like machine learning program. We can program for you know, using technologies like machine learning. We can you know, program for using technologies like you know, say blockchain technology and other uses, you know all, all that kind of <clears throat> kind of thing. But and and the, and the thing is, this has to be done preferably within a year, you know, because already the time is gone. Within a year, if, if uh, it is done, that will be fine. You will be stronger, stronger. We will be stronger, and, and, and that's all is the basic issue. How best we can strengthen and give the countering answers to the questions, as I said before. You know, they, they kind of, so we, we will be in a position to do that. Now, <clears throat> now I think uh, it is around 40 minutes uh, gone. So <clears throat> I, I would I gradually like to sum up. I am known as a person who actually do not go beyond time. So I'll, I, I'll today also stick to that. You know? <clears throat> So now, lastly, sirs and uh, friends, I am at least sure that if we equip ourselves with these and other related information, we will be in a bargaining position. We will be in a bargaining position to claim our enhanced share of budget allocation. We will be in a position to claim our NPA. We will be in a position <coughs> to, to even have institutions like ICBR or a special DG in ICR system, all those things. If we say these things convincingly, we will be in a position. And I think going by the successes recorded by the state veterinary universities so far, excellent successes, some of them have made. Going by that kind of successes, I, I, I think similar approach we will have to take and that is the need of the art. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tripathi ji, and thank you all of you. I think I'm, I'm on time. And I lastly, uh, lastly, I open it up for uh, your inputs, for your suggestions, for your discussions, for your acquisitions, and, and whatever you, you want to do like. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, sir, for, for very, you know, uh, thought-provoking lot of action points for me. We have for all, but at least for me, a lot of action points have been there to be. Yes, lot so, of lot of responsibilities for you. <laughs> so, so, I think we can take some questions. May I have question and comments? May uh, Dr. Amishwar Singh? Dr. Amishwar Singh, sir, you have anything? Uh, now, now I'm unmuted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, congratulations, sir, for uh, uh, this uh, very thoughtful topic, uh, which we really uh, need and uh, uh, to say, <coughs> reflect on uh, the work kind of contribution we have all made uh, to our uh, livestock sector and uh, apprise uh, the stakeholders, policy makers, and uh, our public at large, so that we can uh, also make an assessment of our own contribution to our satisfaction, plus the way forward. And wherever we uh, have made a big good dent, that we can capitalize upon to further uh, strengthen our activities. 
So this is a very challenging task, and I remember uh, Honorable Dr. Ayyappan Saab used to talk many times for third-party evaluation of the impact ICR has made or our technologies have made in the field. And uh, many times such questions might have come from uh, planning commission and uh, other bodies also that what is your uh, net contribution uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, some data or uh, kind of figures which we can give. But as you said very rightly that uh, uh, we have not done this exercise uh, in a systematic manner and that is the need of the hour uh, to do it. You have listed uh, most of the items, but still uh, many more can be listed. And uh, like uh, uh, we have introduced uh, quail farming or uh, rabbit farming and also uh, processing and production of new uh, uh, manufacturing of new products also, which are, which are going out. And then uh, the increase in the processing and value addition, which was earlier not there. So I think this is a very stimulating uh, uh, talk given by you, which uh, has you know led us to uh, think on these lines and uh, work more on these lines. So I think uh, this will this has shown a kind of a white paper or a background paper uh, has been given by you, which for which. I think all of us are very uh, thankful to you uh, for doing this. And now, uh, as you have given the task to all of us, okay. then uh, we, we, we must start working on it. Yeah, we, you, we must. I, I, I also said there, if needed, we will assist. <laughs> <laughs> if needed, we will assist. Uh, sure, sir. Sure. It, it, it's the need of the hour, actually. Right. And I'm, I am so very happy that you are, you are doing such wonderful thing in your university. Yeah. I must con complain, congratulate you once again. Okay, okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this time, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now, uh, in purchase of lecture line, the fact that we have around more than 300 people joined this uh, lecture series. After a long time, we have got these many people who have joined this seminar. Uh, so there's a continuation, there's a lot of message we are getting in chat box uh, for, your, for your lecture. That has been very informative, eye openers, and also uh, many messages I am getting from Dr. Dajay Singh, Vice Chancellor, uh, and Vasu. Uh, he has written that uh, that more than 80 percent of DFI double double in the farm income has come from animal husbandry, and the even Galway Committee has also the importance of uh, animal husbandry in terms of the farmer's income. Uh, I do not see any, any specific question, uh, but certainly a uh, lot of comments uh, that has come from, from the people around the very nice and informative presentations. They have, some of them have worked under you at Parapani, so they are also appreciating your lecture. Uh, one of the lecture from Ramesh said the livestock now contributes as much as 40% of India's agricultural GDP. The country can no longer neglect livestock sector. The issue raised by speaker needs urgent attention. So we have got so many information. Now uh, we will have some uh, few comments from uh, Dr. Madan. Sir, if he is... Dr. Madan, sir, I am Abhi. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, it was equally great a pleasure listening to Vujubhava uh, for his masterly presentation of understanding livestock sector in the country. As I was listening to him, I was uh, reminded of uh, Steve Jobs when he talked about the fourth and fifth dimension, because we knew only about three dimensions of an upper body. And if I'm not mistaken, that uh, even beyond third gen dimension, which we have gone to the fifth dimension of the livestock production in this country. And that is illustrative of the fact that how futuristic 
he has been thinking of. As a matter of fact, that there is no second thought to the fact that he brought about about the data and data collection. At no point of time can we succeed in any improvement program unless we have data in front of us. I think that uh, he has taken a page from the Chinese uh, proverb, which they say that what you cannot count, you can never improve. In order to improve, we need facts. And I have, uh, <laughs> I'm rather, uh, you know, scared of him saying that, you know, that in a one year's time, <laughs> uh, Honorable DDC will have to take it on. I know that to collect the data is not a very simple task. For that, we have to make a system, complete system, in which that monitoring of the data is there. And Firstly, data collection, then data monitoring, then data assimilation, and finally data analysis. This, all this will only lead us to, for example, uh, what we talk today of this uh, uh, machine intelligence data logger basis, and also produce models which will help us in dealing with our vast animal population. I think he has been very right in pointing out that in spite of the population which we have, what we need to go into and understand is that uh, what we are getting out of this population. One is in terms of the improvements which we have already observed, but the other dimension of it is that what is that, what is quoted in a form of a couple of slides, that what is now going on for future for us? And I think that uh, it needs a greater clarity of mind and thought, which I believe he has, uh, through which he has spoken today, about uh, talking realistically about future. Uh, I must mention in here that the livestock sector in this country is undergoing great transformation. Uh, I will not be uh, elaborating on that point. Maybe sometime else I will elaborate on that point. But that transformation which is taking place is a total agricultural transformation. That through the transformation taking place in livestock, the whole agricultural scenario in this country is changing. And therefore, that uh, along with that change, the men, materials, and facilities have also to change. And that's where, Dr. Tripathi, you have to come in, that you have to ensure that such type of men, material, and facilities do come up in a time frame, which he laid down, and we are able to make success out of the first story. The rest of the things uh, I, I, I need not think. I think that uh, I, I will only like to congratulate him for the very nice presentation he made. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for, for nice comments and uh, uh, one of how how now really agriculture and animal has made itself in a transformative stage now. So, so really you have to work on those those lines, man, material, and facilities that to be so that we can really cope with the growth. Uh, I think there was no not any specific question in the chat box except that people are appreciating the lecture. Uh, if uh, Dr. Ram, uh, Dr. Indraji Singh, if she is there, one to two minutes comment he can give. Dr. Indraji Singh. Dr. Dr. C.S. Prasad. No, I think not there. So uh, let me. Yeah, I'm here, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Two minutes, sir. Yeah. Any comments? Uh, very difficult to match the eloquence of uh, Dr. Bujabar. I uh, worked with him for many years and I've seen the oratory skills of Dr. Bujabar and today was no exception. Uh, talking about this uh, particular technology, how you can measure the impact of the technology. Uh, you see, there were uh, many times we did this sort of a study at local level, as Dr. Meshwar Singh said, the impact analysis part, which the DG at that time was insisting we should take up. 
Uh, for example, I'll give you about the mineral mixture supplementation at particular areas. We found the reproductive efficiency increases by about 13 to 15%. If that was the case, how much of mineral mixture went into the field? This was done by the Karnataka Milk Federation. And we found the improvement was uh, to the extent about 17% in the area which was covered. But it is at a regional level, at a particular status level. Now, coming to how best we can use this knowledge to uh, extrapolate it is to know a technology has been transferred. And suppose Harid Dara, we, he was talking about. Now, Harid Dara has been transferred. It has been sold. How many people have bought it? How many farmers have bought it? And how many animals have been fed on this? If we know that, we know how much of Harid Dara is gone into the animal. And you know that Harid Dara reduces the methane emission by 15, 20%. I think that's how we can go about, and as you rightly said, an institution with social scientists should take up this task on a regular basis and should be on a timely scale. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, I think we are all, almost uh, one hour. So let me just uh, finish it uh, by summarizing uh, Dr. Bujar Burwa's lectures and few uh, to one of the I mean, very comments from uh, Dr. Rameswar and Dr. Madan and Dr. C.S. Prasad. Uh, well, today's lecture was really you known that we have been waiting for it. It has been attended by more than 300 people. That itself uh, uh, tells that how important it was and how informative it was, out of appreciation. Uh, starting from the uh, normal data that we normally use to give on livestock data for which we can always take pride. Uh, certainly that uh, those data says that livestock production, livestock husbandry itself is going to going to be a uh, main contributor to, to, to the agricultural, agricultural economy as such. And I feel that today's world, you know, it all depends, it all run by economists. So, this, this talk actually, uh, if you see that assessing the um, animal science technology's contribution to livestock and poultry sector growth. So again, this is assessment in, in terms of economy, ultimately, how much livestock sector is contributing. Uh, what is our contribution? What are technology that, that has gone to field? How many people have adopted? How many farmers? And how it, and ultimately we come to the, to the end in the economic value of this technology. Certainly the livestock production is technology uh, oriented to technology injection and infusion. Only we could have been able to get this growth in livestock sector. So, so uh, I mean, several times, you know, from, from, from 10 to 50 times growth in milk, egg, meat, etc. And uh, Dr. Bajwarwa has really uh, ask certain question and I try to answer how we can really access our technology, whether it is a production technology, giving some example in, 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 in a livestock sector and also in poultry sector, uh, this technology, how we can really create a database uh, from ICR institution, the universities, SAUs and, and state veterinary university. And then when we really, we can go for a meta analysis and say that this is our contribution. And once you are, you are in front of any policy makers uh, to whom you are going to ask for money for, for any budget, then certainly they always ask, what is the loss that you are going to bring? What is the gain you are going to have it? Uh, so how, how much, if I, if I send, give you 10,000 crore, then how much you are going to, re to give me return? And that is why FMD has been, you know, it has been around you know, last one more than 20,000 20, crore. So now the government has started a program on these diseases. Similarly, once upon a time, the people were asking about PPR, the PPR vaccine. Then when I realized I uh, produced this vaccine and asked the government to launch a national education program, then they asked that what, what, how much is the loss due to PPR? And that have data, but now the government has realized it based on the data that how, how if the PPR is controlled, how it can it can be a source for the livelihood of farmers. So for so that way, certainly by giving certain examples, uh, uh, Dr. Bhagavad has really, you know, has, has alarmed us rather and, and opened our eyes that how we should go along, whatever we work. And we see that to down how, how far it is going, 
to how many people this technology is going and then direct and indirect benefits. And that we have to really calculate it. And I am behind my economist, at least in the inverse science division, uh, that they should, they, should, they should evaluate it for, for every technology that, that we are releasing here. Uh, um, Sir has given a lot of you know, uh, work for me and also for the, all my chancellors of university. So, so really, sir, I think I have, I have taken, taken uh, this and uh, we will really work on your suggestion. And this suggestion is really very important. One of the suggestions that you gave also around about the animal variety release. Certainly, we do not have a, we, we just to get our variety needs, et cetera, released by, 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 by the ministers or by DG. But certainly, there should be a, a variety release committee at the central level. And, uh, how, and then at the state level, and who and how we are going, and who are the people responsible who are going to multiply this, this variety, this cement, this seed, this poultry, and whatever. So certainly, sir, we will like to have this issue, and we'll take up this issue at, uh, at a DADF, at the ministry level also. And we see that a registration, I mean, a release committee should, should be there in the country so that it can give a, give a message, and there must be some rules responsibility of all stakeholders that how we can really you know, proliferate this technology and take, take to the take our stakeholders. So that, that, that part we'll do, sir. And for, you know, for the registration committee, we already have it. So because uh, uh, we registration and the direct notification, which is all going regularly uh, in the animal science division here, so we are doing it. Uh, Dr. has also very clearly pointed out backyard poultry and given the best example, and, and also uh, one of the, in one of my presentation when I was giving before I was minister, and, and, and I just said that uh, around more than 70% of uh, backyard poultry production, you know, it goes carried to ICR, the State Culture University, through our product. And he has given data that how five, 4.5 crore birds have been given. And for these birds, they might have further multiplied also. It, it includes several lines also. So from there now, so lot of lot of lot of contribution uh, in the area of backyard poultry production, which ICR has contributed, but certainly we do not know exact figure in, in terms of economic value. That is important. So that I think um, you have really you know given one of the best lecture, and we have started. Uh, there will be a few more lectures, at least three more lectures uh, from Animal Science Division and uh, Professor Madan and Dr. Yadho and Dr. K.K. Sharma, uh, at least to Padamsi, they will also give lectures in next uh, uh, in, in the next one month, all these lectures will come up. And I, I really thank all of you. And first I would like to uh, thank Dr. Bidhi for accepting our invitation to, to deliver this lecture. Uh, and also, so uh, all the participants, all level uh, vice chancellors from different universities, and all directors, team directors from ICR Institute, and scientists, students, and um, there are so many people that have joined it. I'm really thankful to all of you for joining this, uh, uh, this, this thought-provoking lecture in large numbers. And I hope that the uh, message that has been given by him will go down the line far away. I mean, it will certainly, the task that has been given by him to us, we certainly would like to do that and we will work on it. this, thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ji. Thank you. Oh, thanks, one and all. I'm grateful, really indebted. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Namaskar. So we now we close the meeting.